I just got back from Tom Morello at Varsity Theater, and holy fuck, dude, was it like top five or top ten concerts I've ever seen. Probably top concert this year. Uh, <laughs> God damn, man, like fuck. How do I go through this? So, um, where do I even begin? Like, you all know Tom Morello from Rage Against the Machine, Audio Slave, Night Watchman, all that stuff. Like, he's got this very unique style of guitar playing that, like, I mean, like, he'll toggle with switches, feedback, all that cool shit. <laughs> like, I can't even explain. Well, I guess. How I kind of see it is like, it's like watching the unmasked left wing Buckethead perform. It's so fucking cool. Holy fuck. How to break this down. So, Tom Morello, for this performance, he was supporting this album, Atlas Underground. And uh, basically, if I'm, I haven't even heard it yet. I'm not quite that familiar. I went in only being a Rage Against the Machine Audio Slave fan. So I haven't actually heard much of the solo material, Night Watchman, Atlas Underground, all that stuff. So completely blank slate, just knowing like what he's capable of doing with the guitar, which is fucking mind-boggling. <laughs> and so went in with a clean slate, just expecting some mind-bursting fucking guitar playing. Holy fuck! And that's exactly what I got. Not only did I get that though. Got to see Tom Morello play acoustically for the first time ever. Like, he played three songs. Uh, here, I'll break it down. So, this album right here, Atlas Shrugged. Uh, I almost called it Atlas Shrugged. God damn it. <laughs> Atlas Underground. <laughs> it's like antithetical to Tom's thing. <laughs> He's definitely not a libertarian. <laughs> but anyway, this is like a big... It's like a Gorillaz album or something like where like it's Tom is the head honcho of the album and the creative process and he just collabs with a bunch of people and assuming that all the other collaborators were, bu were busy with other projects like um, he only had like the audio of them performing with like the audio and the video of like I think it was Killer Mike and maybe the dude from Rise Against those were definitely two songs. I'm not entirely sure, so don't, don't crucify me if I'm wrong, but I think those two, just based on face value, what I saw on the screen and hear, heard their voices, so those were two. Um, a lot of it, of course, was like instrumental, just Tom doing his fucking thing. It was fucking amazing. <laughs> Holy shit. But then, so like, if you're a fan, if you're a fan of Rage Against the Machine, the first half of the set definitely for you. Holy fucking like, this stuff is probably more political than Rage Against the Machine. Like, the, it lists like the. I remember that one of the earliest graphics is just listing a bunch of people killed by the police over the years, and then uh, there was a graphic with uh, it listed like all the names of the veterans of the Vietnam War, and it even listed like the list of Vietnamese that were killed due to the war that and that fucking skyrocketed like out into space <laughs> I love the graphics I, I obviously agree with the politics um, so yeah first half of the set pretty much like what you expect from the guitarist of Rage Against the Machine uh, then we moved, like I think he did a medley at one point which included like the first section of Like a Stone by Audio Slave and he even played the guitar solo which was fucking amazing <laughs> so, there are at least two tributes to his buddy and fellow bandmate Chris Cornell and Audio Slave, that being one of them. And then we'll get to the second one, which is like the about the halfway point in the set where it was like three acoustic songs, all of which he sung and played. Um, and the last song, I can't remember what it was called, but it was just it was this really raw, emotional acoustic song dedicated to Chris Cornell and I even teared up a bit like three times like fuck like he requested the entire theater to be quiet dead fucking silence and like I think that was one of those rare moments where like even just by asking that people still whipped out their fucking phones and recorded it I was I was considering it but like I wanted to be respectful because this was like one of those sheer fucking heartfelt moments that was in tribute and homage to his fallen bandmates and just fuck it was emotional so 
Classic Rage, basically tribute to Chris Cornell. Two of them. One that was like a stone, and then three acoustic songs, all which he sang, and then the second Chris Cornell tribute, and then <laughs> as he promised after the or like during like the setup to the Chris Cornell tribute uh, acoustic cri tribute, I thought he was gonna play um that uh, a cover of that one song that Chris did acoustically, if I'm not mistaken, uh, is a Prince song. Uh, what's it called? Uh, nothing. Nothing compares to you. That's it. Yeah. I thought he was going to play that, but that was what <laughs> that made me fucking cry. Someone left a, a ninja left a bowl of onions <laughs> to that fucking song for sure. And then you got the last half of the set, which is four or five songs. I can't remember, but just classic, like what you expect from rage, prophets of rage, whatever. <laughs> um, and I believe he played the ghost of Tom Joad as the, like the penultimate song. And then there was the grand finale, which everyone was, I mean, like, everyone knows he's just world famous for being the guitarist for Rage Against the Machine. So obviously it was Rage Against the Machine. And I thought it was going to be like Bulls on Parade, but no, it was, it was a gospel song, according to Tom, Killing in the Name. <laughs> but you know what he did that was so fucking awesome? At that last song is like, the only musician I've ever really <laughs> heard of that just like hey everyone like 200 people come up on the stage and <laughs> obviously not 200 people more like maybe 50 but a fuck ton of people went up on stage some drunk fat belligerent fuck was like blocking security so I was this fucking close I'm a little salty still from not being able to go up on stage with fucking Tom Morello and hear one of the <laughs> Rage Against the Machine's greatest songs <laughs> But it was still so fucking awesome. Holy shit, man. <laughs> what a fucking night that was. I was only like two rows away anyway. I was so close, but fuck, man. That was, that was like top five, top ten concert material for me. I'd go again if he's doing this tour for that long, but uh, we'll just have to see how it goes. But fuck. I, like, after that... <laughs> I had to get this. Also, his opener was pretty good, too. I believe they're called Bones from the UK. It's this uh, all-female power trio that has, this. I would say, like, the same spirit as Rage Against the Machine. Like, I don't know if, like, they're do they do a whole, like, feminist type thing, but just, like, I love the aesthetic of the band. They wore, like, I think it was, like, jumpsuits or something. It was just, or no, parachute, you know, things that those fucking uniforms that people wear when they parachute or <laughs> Like what Pete Townshed used to wear, you know what I'm saying? But it was, that was really fucking cool. Their opener was really cool. I would have bought music from them, but I only got this. And fuck, dude. I highly recommend checking out Tom Morello on the Atlas Underground Tour. You will not regret it.